This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Thursday, July 9th, 2020. 200 years ago, um, William Ellery Channing wrote this, and apologies for the gendered language of the time. Our leading principle in interpreting scripture is this, that the Bible is a book written for men, in the language of men, and that its meaning is to be sought in the same manner as that of other books. We believe that God, when God speaks to the human race, conforms, if we may say so, to the established rules of speaking and writing. How else would the scriptures avail us more than if com communicated in an unknown tongue? In the first place, later on he says, we believe in the doctrine of God's unity, or that there is one God and one only. To this truth we give infinite importance, and we feel ourselves bound to take heed, lest anyone spoil us of it by vain philosophy. The proposition that there is one God seems to us exceedingly plain. We understand by it that there is only one being, one mind, one person, one intelligent agent, and one only. We object to the doctrine of the Trinity, that whilst acknowledging in words it subverts in effect the unity of God. When Channing spoke those 200 years ago, it was at a service of ordination at the First Free Church of Baltimore. In his sermon, he laid out the points of departure from the Christianity of his day, primarily reason as the primary lens of scripture, and the Trinity as a rhetorically elegant but ultimately extra-scriptural inv invention and then claimed for the emerging movement that he was a part of, the title of Unitarian. This is one of our founding stories as a tradition, as a liberal offshoot to liberal Christianity. Now that's not the only story, but it is a central one. Channing and his peers didn't see themselves as opposing Christianity or as breaking free somehow. They saw it as bringing Christianity closer to what it should be. And over time, that position evolved. You know, if we interpret scripture through the lens of reason, like Channing said, and a generation later with Emerson and the Transcendentalists, our personal experience of the divine, then why is scripture limited to this single set of books written in Greek and Hebrew? And, if we open ourselves to the possibility of revelation coming from many sources and direct experience, then a creed is not congruent with our beliefs. And then, if a creed is not congruent with our beliefs, then our members and our clergy can accept or reject any number of theologies, including humanism and more traditional forms of Christianity, and still be in relationship, be in covenant, with the institution of Unitarianism. There's a whole other evolution that goes on over the course of the same time period in the Universalist faith, but that's a story for a different day. And so, while the Unitarianism that merged with Universalism in 1961 had a strong humanist flavor, that humanism, I think, was a direct result of the kind of liberal Christianity of Channing's generation that says, we interpret scripture through the lens of reason because that is the only way we can understand the mind of God. We express it in very, very different ways now, but that remains a kernel of our tradition. I'll see you at worship tonight. Um, it's Thursday night, so it's a night for worship at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. The Zoom link will be in your e-blast today. I'll see you then, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow as we close out this series of reflections.